At the end of part one, I decided that the right thing to do to address my D-term noise issue was to filter the D-term a little more aggressively with a low-pass filter built into Betaflight. Betaflight's default is to have no low-pass filtering, and the goal there is to reduce the latency of the D-term so that the D-term is as in sync with the P-term as possible. The more filtering you put on the D-term, the cleaner it gets, but the more out of sync with the P-term it gets, and therefore you, get, you can get worse flight characteristics, and that's why the default is the way it is. I decided to change the filtering and not adjust the D-gains because the overall magnitude and behavior of the P-term looked about right. It's just that it looked like it had way too much high-frequency noise getting in from the gyro. So my thinking was that the gains were probably about correct, and we just need to add some filtering to clean it up a little bit. The other thing you might be wondering is why I didn't decide to change the gyro filtering instead of the D-term filtering. And the reason for that is that the gyro traces, and go back and look if you need to, but you can take my word for it, the gyro traces themselves look pretty thin. So it doesn't seem like we have excess noise getting in from the gyro, it just seems like the D-term is, is having some trouble handling what little noise there is. So what was the result? Perfect day for tuning your pids. Yikes! Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Now this really surprised me. And this is, I think, I think this is really cool. Nothing has changed about this tune except that I've changed the low pass cutoff frequency for the, for the D-term. So D-term LPF Hertz, I think, is the name of the parameter. But the copter is acting for all the world like we have excessive P gain. This, this is just classic P-term oscillation. Notice that it is a smooth sinusoidal shape with a consistent spacing between the peaks so a consistent frequency and relatively regular magnitude. Not a perfectly, not identical magnitude, but relatively regular. Not like that high frequency random spikiness that we saw with D-term noise. Now here we can see that there's a mixture of D-term and P-term going on. There's, we see some of the components of the P-term oscillation with the regularity in the spikes, but it's also got some sharpness that's, that's more indicative of D-term. Here again, we're back in this P-term oscillation mode. The copter is acting like it has excess P gain, just very clearly. It's not acting like it has excess D gain, maybe a little, but not a lot. But there's lots of P-term oscillations that didn't used to be there. And I'll, by the way, I'll, I put this back after this test. I turned that option back off again and did one more pass just to make sure I wasn't crazy. This stuff isn't there. So what's happening? Well, I'll show you. If we look at this example, let's look at, uh, I don't like that one. This is the one I want. Let's look at this example and let's zoom in and look at the relationship between the P and the D term. Now, if you know math, then you know that the D term is the derivative of the P term. And this will all make complete sense to you. But for the rest of us who didn't take calculus or who failed it, <laughs> the finger pointed at me, uh, here's what's going on. The D term leads the P term. So notice that the P term is leveling off and starting to go downwards. But before it does that, the D term has already leveled off and is already heading downwards. It's getting there first. And here the P term is leveling off and turning around and going positive. But the D term has already done it, right? The D term is leading the P term. And the D term does that because the D term sort of anticipates the P term. It's kind of like when you see somebody and they're starting to get mad. They don't have noticed it yet, but you can tell their cheeks are red, their brow is furrowed, their steam coming off their head. And you go, hey, hey, man, how about we go get a, you know, go outside for a minute, right? That's the D term. The D term heads off the P term when things are going right. But what we've done here is we have changed the phase relationship between the D term and the P term. When we lower that cutoff fre frequency to filter the D term more heavily, we add latency to the D term. So it lags more, it's, it's less able to lead the P-term, and therefore it's less able to do its job. 
By the way, you may be a tiny bit confused because we changed the D-term LPF Hertz value from 0 to 40. So you might think that we raised it and we're filtering less. But a 0 value means don't filter at all. It just shuts the filter off. So any number other than 0 means we're filtering more heavily. Anyway, the gist of this is that because of the additional delay we put on the D-term, the D-term is less able to help control the P-term and then the p-term gets out into its oscillation mode and starts oscillating and it feels like the p-term is too high. Now, this, is, this was a great, great insight and a great example of how the PIDs interact with each other. There's a relationship between them and, and it, for a given d value, there will be a given p-value that's optimal. But then if you change the d or if you change the d-term filtering, the optimal p-value may change. And if you're especially if you tuned sort of to the to the edge of oscillation and now we can see here that we made a little bit of a radical change and that put that number over the edge okay so i thought this was a really really fascinating example of of how these parameters all interact well the next thing i did was i put d term lpf hertz back to zero disabled it as is the default and i reduced my d gains i mean if the, the filtering clearly didn't work it cleaned the d trace up a little bit but then it made my P gains all completely out of whack. And I certainly could have gone down that road. I could have said, okay, I'm going to go for a more filtered D term, but then I'm going to have to reduce my P gains as a result, but I'll be able to leave my D gains a little higher. But I don't want to go down that road. My, pers my perspective is that the D term is, is like, it's like, a, you know, it's the rogue cop on the force, right? And, uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen when he shows up, okay? You really want the P term doing most of the work. And if you have to bring the D term in to help, okay, but you want like as little of it as you as you need to get your job done, right? So if I can get the job done, good flight characteristics with P term and less D term, then that's what I'm going to prefer. I hoped that by adding the filtering, I could leave my P and D where it was and just clean things up a smidge, but that just didn't work. And by the way, as long as we're discussing alternative approaches I might have taken, why didn't I try throttle PID attenuation, right? It's when the throttle is high that I'm seeing this sort of rough flight characteristics. Ah, uh, but remember that I mostly see these flight characteristics when I'm in a prop wash scenario, and I can be in a prop wash scenario at a mid throttle. So it's not a guarantee that I'm going to have this problem at a high throttle. I do have it at a high throttle, but I also often have it at a middle throttle. And so throttle PID attenuation is not the right approach anyway. I really feel like TPA is, is kind of gone away in the now that we have the latest versions of Betaflight and what they do, that you probably shouldn't need it. And, and we'll see if I'm right about that, at least in this case. All right, so I reduced my D gains. They used to be roll, pitch, yaw were 7, 9, and 3. And I took those down to, uh, I believe, 4, 5, and 3. Okay? So I significantly reduced both on pitch and roll because they both looked pretty noisy. And here was the result. Well, I feel like things are definitively better there. Now, if we go back, we can see that there are definitely some scenarios where we get some P-term oscillations, okay? So maybe we could make an argument that my P-gain is higher than it should be. And we do see some times where we get a more D-term-ish looking scenario right here where we're starting to get to higher throttle and we're starting to see these spikes and stuff come through. This looks like a D-term issue. So here again, this is more a p-term sur surging and oscillation, strong p-term oscillations here. But look how well contained the d-term is while the p-term is in its oscillating mode. Okay, the d-term is not flipping out. The p-term lines are smooth. We're not seeing a lot of d-term influence there in the overall behavior. And, uh, and I feel like this is just way better. So now we have the freedom to go ahead and try to adjust our p term so it's how we want it and and like i said maybe it's a little higher if it's with somebody else's log i might be saying that this is excessive then again how often are you at 1900 throttle maybe that's just the you know that's okay if you're going to be at 1900 throttle but you get a little oscillations i think we'll agree that the copter didn't have any terrible flight characteristics 
So there's room for refinement here though, but I think we've made a big improvement by reducing those D gains, okay? Now, the next thing you might be wondering is, okay, sure, but with the D gains that low, how does the copter fly? Well, let's find out. That looked pretty good to me. Ah, let's look at the gyro. Hey, we got any overshooter bounce back here? Oh man, I think if you look at this with a microscope, you can see that that gyro line just barely crosses the line and goes back. There's the tiniest, tiniest bit of overshoot and bounce back there. But uh, I feel like that was pretty clean, a pretty clean roll. I'm kind of giddy about it. Let's slow this down and let's watch it slowly. Yeah, I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty clean. So I, I do some flips as well. Let's keep watching. Ah, it looks pretty clean. Now I think there's a little bit more of a bounce there. Where was it? Where's that foot? Come back. Where'd you go? Oh, pff, dummy. <laughs> Looking at the wrong axis. There we go. Where's it? Here it is. And yeah, so not quite as sharp and clean a stop on the pitch axis. So maybe, maybe we add a little bit more determine on the pitch axis. What does that look like when we're on, on full throttle? Definitely some oscillation. Could probably stand to reduce the P term a little. Uh, the D term looks very well behaved though. Okay, so um, yeah, so there's room for refinement here, right? We're seeing a little bit more P-term oscillation. And frankly, I think there's a little more P-term oscillation than there normally is when I fly. And maybe that's because I reduced the D-gains. So we're trying to find a sweet spot here where we have enough D-term that we can raise the P-term. The higher the D-gain goes, the higher we can afford to raise the P-gain in general, right? But then as we, add, as we raise the D-gain, we start to get more noise and, and more rough motors and, and rough flight characteristics that we don't want, okay? So then we bring the D term, the D gain down, and that smooths things out a little bit, but then we may need to bring the P gain down a little bit because now we're going to have slightly more P term oscillations. And then if we keep doing that, eventually the copter will start to fly soft and we won't like that. And we're just trying to sort of work that back and forth and find the sweet spot. Okay. But uh, I think this is an improvement because we don't see that crazy D term noise that, that was causing problems at full throttle, making the copter fly rough, look like it's flying over a rough road, and just making the traces look terrible, okay? Uh, and I think that's a big improvement. I'll bet that I can bring the P gains down by just a smidge, the copter will still fly very well, and, uh, and, and everything will be great. Alrighty, well, I hope that was all helpful, hope it was informative, and as always, happy flying.